broke as they say, but that's not entirely true. If you're a member of the mainstream media here in Canada, you can go as woke as you want and as broke as you want. And you can just go jangling hat in hand to Justin Trudeau's liberals. Chorus Entertainment last week published a sustainability report. And it's not just sustainability with regard to environmentalism and those goals, but also with regard to diversity. And this company, Chorus, it's been going broke for a very long time, but that's fine because Justin Trudeau has all of your money to give them. Joining me now to discuss his expose into Chorus Entertainment's new woke policies is Cosman Georgia from True North. Cosman, thanks for joining us and thanks for your careful eye to these sorts of crazy stories. What does their sustainability policy, what does it entail? Sure. Thanks for having me, Sheila. Um, so this report, it, it's an annual report that Chorus Entertainment has produced, I, I think, for a few years now. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, Chorus Entertainment owns uh, a bunch of media companies, uh, both in terms of producing like TV shows, but they also own Global News, which is a major news provider here in Canada. Now, this uh, report essentially sets out to align all of these subsidiaries of Chorus uh, along what are called environmental social development goals. Now, these are closely borrowed from the United Nations, which has SDG goals, and they've promoted that worldwide, both in the private and public sector. So this is an attempt to essentially align behind this ideological perspective. Now, what does that mean in practice? That means giving employees diversity, equity training, um, inclusion training, uh, subjecting them to carbon tracking, et cetera. So it's a sort of grab bag of this environmental progressive left ideology subjected on what is a private company from the top down. Yeah, this is really just, you know, the... I don't want to say the CBCification of global news, but really that is what it is at the end of the day. And I, I don't think people really understand just how big global news is. They are very difficult to avoid if you're consuming any sort of Canadian media, because not only do they own global news, but they also own so many of the local news stations that are on old fashioned terrestrial radio. That's for sure. Uh I believe media in Canada is owned, 80% of the media in this country is owned by a handful of companies, very wealthy uh, Canadian families and individuals control most of the media narrative uh, in Canada. So it's concerning to see when you have all of these companies uniting under this umbrella and, and going in the exact same direction, which is a, a progressively woke direction, and you see it in their reporting. I mean, we saw it with uh, coverage from Global News on the Freedom Convoy. We see it with their coverage of conservative leader Pierre Polyev. Uh, it's, it's very troubling from a media uh, observation perspective to see this uh, monopoly that's, that's being formed in this country. Yeah, it's almost like a re-education camp for the employees of of global news so that their viewpoints are nearly completely homogenous if they know what's good for them. Now, I, I want to talk to you about just how diverse global news really is, because when I saw your article, I, I it just piqued my curiosity because they have this focus on diversity. And so I thought, who's running the show down there? Um, definitely not a, a person that the mainstream media or the wokesters would consider uh, a diversity hire. The CEO of Global News is Doug Murphy. Um, and it's my understanding he's a middle-aged white guy <laughs> based on what I can find out about him on uh, on the news. Um, but at the end of the day, regardless of you know his ethnic background, and I don't really care about those things, but the left tells me they do, um, I care about his uh, success. And as it were, would turn out, he's overseen the decrease in stock value over at Chorus 
of uh, about 80% over the past five years. And so instead of focusing on fixing that and making this a profitable company, that doesn't really seem to be the focus of what's happening at Chorus whatsoever. And it's interesting that it's called a sustainability report, but the question remains, what are they actually sustaining here? <laughs> are they sustaining uh, their business practices, their profitability, you know, their um, responsibility to shareholders? Are they sustaining their responsibility to Canadian viewers who need uh, quality journalism? And look, you know, Global News has produced uh, some very fine journalism. I know here in British Columbia, they covered the um, money laundering situation. They've, they've recently done some great reporting on the uh, Chinese interference. So I feel really bad for some of the journalists there who have veteran journalists, quite frankly, who have spent their careers uh, putting out excellent work. And now this company is getting them tangled up in you know Stalinistic uh, ideological sweat sessions, instead of letting these very brave journalists do their work, do the reporting that this country needs, and hold the government to account. You know that is true that there are some really great journalists left in mainstream media. I when I hear about Chorus, I always think, how do we get Roy Green out of there? How do we <laughs> airlift that poor man out of that company? But th the remaining good journalists there, their good work is tainted by this these policies, but also the bailouts. So, uh, you know, that was one thing you noted in your piece was this company is losing money. Instead of focusing on fixing that problem, the guy who's responsible for the loss in share price seems to not be facing any consequences. You, in a normal company, that guy might get fired. But instead of fixing it, they just go hat in hand to the federal government and demand more money and they will get it as long as they publish news that is favorable with regard to the Liberals. Right, it's an interesting situation because Global News, um, well, Chorus is essentially going to the government right now uh, asking to be included in the $600 uh, media bailout. Now that bailout was uh, some adjustments to the Income Tax Act, uh, which allowed um, print publications to tap into that taxpayer funding. Now, that excludes broadcasters like Global News and, and various uh, radio subsidiaries of Chorus. So now they want to get in on that party. So I, it makes me wonder, are these sustainability reports a, a means for them to curry favor with the government, saying, look, hey, we're, we're making these changes that are obviously very much um, endorsed and, and and loved by the liberal government, uh, can you let us in on this big cash grab? That's an excerpt from my show every night. It's called The Ezra Levant Show. That's me, Ezra Levant. Uh, you can see the whole thing behind our paywall. Well, there's a lot of goodies behind there. I do a show every weeknight. My friends Sheila Gunn-Reed and David Menzies and Nat and Kat have their shows too. You get a ton of content for just eight bucks a month. There's so much in there you won't find anywhere else. Go to rebelnewsplus.com.